Hi, we've got the new Amazon Kindle Fire, 199 US bucks worth of lost leading technology. And you know what we say here on the EEV blog, don't turn it on, take it apart. And of course, I've already done a very lengthy review of this thing. Just click up here and uh, you can watch that uh, review video. This ain't going to be a review. It's going to be a teardown. We're going to crack this sucker open and see what's inside and uh, see if it uh, does have 199 US bucks worth of parts in it because it's supposed to be Kindle's new lost leader. And if you're wondering what the reflection is, that's my oscilloscope and there's my camera. I can check the hair again. Hey. Anyway, we're going to take this sucker apart. There are no uh, visible uh, screws or anything, so it's obviously some sort of um, uh, form fit uh, case or some sort of press fit case with the plastic uh, clips, the, the retaining clips around the outside. That would be my guess, so we're going to use our uh, spudgy here and uh, see if we can uh, pry the case open along the outside of it there. Hey, heard a click there. There we go, we've got our first click. And there you go, you can really see those uh, clips along there that you uh, just sort of uh, snap out as you go along. And uh, we should have those on all the sides and it looks like it should, um, feels like it should just pop off uh, fairly cleanly. There you go, that just popped off real easy. That was uh, as easy or even easier than the uh, original uh, Kindle. So, uh, as you can see, it's uh, pretty much exactly what we expected. We've got some uh, shielding on the back of the case here, but uh, there were no uh, sticky um, things, actually like double-sided tape or anything else sticking it down. We've got a massive battery in here. That's where all your weight's going. That's where all your 404 grams, a good lot of that is uh, going into. It's a lithium-ion battery. We'll go into that. And a small uh, PCB up here and that. That's probably uh, all she wrote. And as with the Kindle, there's the uh, RFID tag. You can see the uh, coil in there which uh, which connects to the little uh, chip inside. And once you add an RFID tag like this to a product, you can do all sorts of uh, versatile things. It'll contain the serial number, you can track it during the production process and do a whole bunch of stuff even after you've actually packaged the thing up. And you can see the conductive paint they've got on the uh, case here. There's the, there's the resistance of the normal ABS uh, case. It's nothing, of course. And if you measure the... Uh, the shielding, there we go. Now in addition to the uh, spray on uh, shielding stuff, which is pretty darn good, they've added this uh, metal uh, plate as well and they've got another uh, metal plate uh, shaped down the bottom here and they've really gone to town on the shielding of this. And it's curious to note that they've deliberately left a little square of um, the case there unshielded and if you see where that actually lines up it uh, lines up pretty much um, over this uh, flat flex cable connector here and I'm not sure why they've left that little bit there unshielded I don't know go figure and the battery is a lithium-ion polymer type of course uh, 3.7 volts so it's a single cell uh, 4400 milliamp hour 16.28 uh, watt hours nominal uh, manufacturer I don't know sort of unknown I don't see uh, any marks in there but uh, the cells are actually uh, made in China and the pack is processed in China and of course having a single um, cell at uh, 3.7 volts is much better than a uh, multiple series connected uh, pack because then you don't have any uh, charge balance issues and the cell should uh, last, a single cell uh, should last a lot longer and, and be more robust in terms of uh, charge and misuse and that sort of thing than a uh, series connected uh, battery which has uh, two or three cells in series but uh, they can obviously uh, power this whole thing from uh, 3.7 volts I mean there may be some DC the DC converters on there to step it up and we'll just take out these battery connectors here this looks like a little flip one yep it is so that uh, should come out there we've uh, switched this uh, thing off we've done a hard uh, switch off so that should be okay and we can oh, there we go we can pull it out like that that one's gone and uh, this main battery one here looks like it can just push out eventually if we wiggle it out like that now it seems like they've gone and uh, really stuck this uh, battery down under here it's quite hard to uh, uh, prize out I'm having a bit of difficulty there's uh, seems to be lots of adhesion under there but 
if we take a look at the two battery connectors, then um, obviously this one here is um, clearly, uh, this one's clearly your power. There's your uh, power and, uh, well, your ground and your power there and maybe some uh, sense lines for uh, temperature. But uh, this connector here must be some sort of, um, I'm guessing some sort of um, uh, maybe uh, ID. And if you have a look in there, we're up to uh, Rev F of the PCB. So they've gone through quite a few uh, spins of this board to get it just right. Uh, presumably uh, manufacturing, um, you know, not so much development uh, passes, I suspect. There'd be a few manufacturing passes so that they can uh, get their uh, cost uh, down and things like that because oh, you often need to respin these boards because you might find another chip that's you know slight that's you know 0.1 cents cheaper or something like that and when you're buying a couple of million of these things it uh, all adds up so you can afford to respin the board a couple of times to optimize your uh, your uh, parts uh, cost and your bill of materials and things like that let's flip up a few more of these connectors once we've undone those screws there and flip it open Bingo, what do we have? A uh, quad flat pack on the uh, flat flex uh, board here. That um, What's that uh, presumably to uh, drive the LCD? We'll take a closer look at that one. Well, it turns out that's actually a uh, Illitech brand uh, touchscreen controller, a uh, 2107 QS 001K device. And it looks like this foam pad in here is uh, covering a device under there. I can see it. Let's rip that off and see what's underneath. Well, that's rather interesting. It turns out uh, those pins uh, weren't anything but uh, an unpopulated expansion connector. And we've got a uh, BGA device under here. That's almost certainly the uh, flash. And up the top here, next to our wireless LAN device, we've got our uh, micro uh, UFL coax connector so they're easy to uh, pop off and get that out of the way so we should be able to uh, get that board out now And you can see that flat flex uh, board to board interface connector there got there. Once you got that off, uh, the board should just lift out. It is stuck down by a bit of gunk, but uh, we should have no troubles just levering that board out. And there's the back of the board. Uh, there's a few interesting things to note. Um, they've got some uh, silicon, uh, sticky silicon pad here to stick it down and uh, interestingly on the USB connector there they've got some um, some uh, some metallic uh, mesh uh, cloth stuff which then mates down into the matching uh, shielding uh, metal down in there and it looks like it goes all throughout there on the base of that right in wow they're really um, trying to uh, uh, just absolutely kill any problems with um, an EMC uh, compliance and RFI and stuff like that. They've really tried to nail this one. And underneath that uh, silicon uh, pad there, there's not really much of interest, just the uh, decoupling and a lot of um, unpopulated decoupling um, parts and, and other uh, uh, passive type parts under the uh, main uh, under the main processor there and the main uh, SRAM. Now let's take a look at the uh, main processor section here and you might think this is the main processor just by the sheer size of it but it ain't. Here's the processor over here. It's uh, a uh, TI um, OMAP uh, processor running at uh, 1 gigahertz. It's a 4430 I, I believe it is and the uh, large device here is um, a Hynix brand. Uh, that's, your, uh, that's your RAM memory. That's uh, 512 megabytes. And there's not much else in there, of course, a crystal oscillator by the looks of it, and uh, just some uh, power supply stuff surrounding the processor. And on the back side of that, you've got a whole bunch of uh, passive uh, parts as well, as we uh, saw before. Now, um, they've actually got this in a metal uh, can, because it's uh, quite uh, high frequency, all the stuff in there, because you have to have a parallel uh, bus running between these things, and, you know, when you get a, uh, you know, a very fast processor like that with a, 
with a big parallel bus in there, you need some shielding. They haven't put the uh, shield in on the top because that's uh, taken care of by the uh, case. Now all these gold uh, pads here, all these um, little donut pads, they're of course, all of course are uh, test points for the bed of nails uh, tester or the fly-in probe tester that they use when they mass assemble these PCBs. They've got to have some way to test them, some way to program them. So uh, you can bet they're unlabeled of course, but uh, they, they know exactly what they do when they set up these jigs. They don't need to label them on the silk screen, not that there's really any room to uh, label them on the silk screen anyway, but you can bet your bottom dollar uh, some of those in there would be the uh, JTAG uh, interface to actually program the uh, OMAP um, and test and uh, program the OMAP processor. And over here we have our uh, Micron brand uh, flash memory. I uh, don't know the number, but that would be the 8 gigabytes of uh, flash. And that device in there is a uh, Texas Instruments uh, LVDS83B uh, 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 bus uh, transmitter. And on the bottom of the board here, once again, Texas Instruments. They love Texas Instruments. They probably got a really sweet deal uh, buying millions of uh, TI parts of various uh, types. Anyway, this is a, a, a TLV uh, 320AIC 3110 uh, low power audio codec. And it's got a 1.3 watt um, Class D uh, amplifier as well. That's for driving the headphone jack and the uh, speakers. And there's a couple of other miscellaneous uh, devices scattered around here. One of them will be like a, a power management controller and there are probably a few little uh, transceiver uh, ICs scattered around the place as well. But uh, apart from that, it is um, surprisingly minimal. And this tiny little uh, BGA uh, package down in here will be uh, some sort of uh, battery management uh, controller, power uh, controller or something like that handling the battery. It's a dead giveaway because it's right next to the power input connector. And in general, there's quite a few unpopulated uh, parts on this board, especially this connector down here. I'm not sure what's doing uh, down at that connector, but uh, we've seen these sort of missing uh, components and missing connectors on Amazon products before. And of course we have our Wi-Fi uh, chipset down here, which is a uh, Georgian uh, WG7310. And of course what's interesting is that they've gone for a double-sided uh, load as opposed to the uh, single-sided load which we saw on the third generation Kindle teardown. And uh, what's the significance of that? Well, it costs a, uh, a it costs more to actually assemble a double-sided load like this and it takes longer to assemble because you've got to actually uh, put your boards uh, through at least uh, twice through the pick and place machine to uh, assemble the components on there. And if you were shooting for the lowest absolute rock bottom possible price, then uh, you'd try to uh, avoid uh, designing a double sided uh, load board at all costs really. And I've taken off the screws for the uh, speaker assembly and you can see that here they've got uh, the, the two speakers either side there, not terribly uh, exciting. Uh, some more exciting stuff is the uh, Wi-Fi antenna on the top of the uh, case here. Once again you can see strapping here for the shielding. Now there's one thing I didn't see on here and that was the uh, accelerometer for the uh, uh, sensing. So I reckon that must be this little uh, board down here with this uh, ribbon cable going out here and um, I think it looks like that's what this is over here. So um, this, this one up here. So I wasn't, uh, I was incorrect that that actually went to the battery. It looks like that goes under the battery somehow and ends up at this board down here. And it looks like we can get the uh, basic uh, frame out by undoing uh, five um, screws around here. Let's see if we can pop it out. And it looks like this just lifts out. Yep, there we go. Once you cut that uh, shielding tape that's holding down that. And uh, bingo. Be careful of the antenna uh, cable. You can take that out. But there you go. There you go. It doesn't look like an accelerometer board. It looks like uh, some sort of light uh, sensor which goes through the uh, front panel. Now why it actually go to all the trouble to have a separate uh, PCB for that, put it up right in that corner, have the uh, cable going right under the battery over, you've got connectors and extra cost and stuff. Why you couldn't uh, have engineered that to put that on the main board? I don't know. And there's the LCD display manufactured by LG. And if I'm not mistaken, that's uh, almost the exact same display used in the Barnes & Noble Nook 7-inch uh, tablet. So it looks like LG have cornered the market there. And you see that the battery is not one cell, but two separate uh, cells. And they'd be, uh, they'd be paralleled up with some uh, circuitry on there to 
um, handle the shared load and the shared charging. And each one's 7.7 .7 watt hours at uh, nominal 3.7 volts. So there you go, that's the uh, teardown. Not too many uh, major surprises in all that. I guess um, I was expecting, say, a uh, single-sided load board to try and uh, keep that uh, cost down, but uh, there's no sort of, uh, looks like uh, very few, if any, uh, custom uh, parts are all off the shelf uh, packages or commercially available uh, cots as they call it commercially available off the shelf devices uh, no surprises at, at all uh, they get the cost down by pure uh, bargaining power they've actually um, system engineered this thing uh, quite well I'm quite impressed with the uh, system engineering of it and the flak flex uh, cables and the board to board inner connects I I can't help but think that in quite a few places they could have um, optimized the uh, cost a bit more. They could have uh, cut some more corners, um, but uh, they've gone obviously gone through quite a few uh, uh, quite a few spins of the uh, PCB and probably the um, uh, all of the mechanical uh, stuff as well. There'd be quite a few spins involved in that before they actually got production uh, units out the door, but. They've done a really good job. So my hat's off to uh, the design team that have designed the uh, Kindle Fire. It's quite nice. I like it. And it looks like it still works. We're Kindle firing. It's firing up. Haven't put the back on, but uh, yeah, touchscreen works. Ah, sweet as. Beautiful. And if you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe. There's a subscribe uh, link after this. Visit eevblog.com. And if you want to chat about electronics and technical stuff, the best place to do it is the eevblog electronics engineering community forum. Check it out, eevblog.com slash forum and it's got countless users on there who chat about everything to do with electronics you name it it's on there catch you later